Good morning. Uh, so today, um, I'm going to do a bunch of things. I'm going to finish up the blads, uh, blad, blood spatter videos. Um, in this one, I'm going to finish up PowerPoint number one and talk about origin of impact patterns. Um, and then I'll be sending out an email to you later in the day. There's going to be a video assignment. Um, right now, the big assignment is just that 35-point uh, homework um, but don't stress on that. It's not like it's, you know, due in two days, okay? But that's the assignment you should be working on. I'll make sure that's uploaded to Talon as well. Okay, so let's finish up this video. Okay, so origin of impact patterns. So what this is, is a method um, by which uh, you can determine where the approximate place in three dimensions um, of the bloodletting event occurred. So basically, where was the victim standing when he or she was stabbed, for example. So we are going to try to determine the origin of where the victim was and their position. So there are three main steps. Now notice that your Brainiac instructor has listed four things here. Um, the three steps are two, three, and four. That's when you're doing the actual calculations. Um, the first thing is to identify a cluster of stains that you think was um, tied to one single event. And that can be kind of tough because a lot of these crime scenes, there's a lot of blood. Um, I'm going to show you an example where um, there literally is just one impact and so it's a little easier. Just realize that in reality things are a lot more complex. Okay, first of all, let's go back to Dexter. Um, Dexter has the luxury of, for whatever reason, the Miami Police Department um, has uh, a ton of these blood-filled heads, which um, as we're all trapped at home, man, that would be a good thing for um, like anxiety release. Um, does that happen in reality? I don't know of a single department that has extra cash laying around to buy um, all these mannequins um, that they can smash and, you know, be done with. So, no, it's much more low tech, but, you know, good for Dexter. The other thing with Dexter is that um, <clears throat> he uses something called the string method, which is absolutely correct. Um, that is the method that's used. However, he's able to get it done, of course, in about, you know, five minutes after arriving at the crime scene, and he's able to give you a play-by-play, -play, which is not reality. You'll also notice here that his, um, the area of where the impact occurred, which is right here, is usually about the size of a dime. Um, that also is not reality, but the string method is the method used. So once again, they've just made everything more dramatic for TV, but it is a scientifically sound method. Okay, so when you've identified a cluster of stains, the first thing you're going to do is you want to calculate the angle of impact of that particular stain. And what that means is basically what angle did that blood hit that surface at? So whether it's blood that's been flung against a wall, um, blood that is on the floor, blood that's on a couch. Um, yep, the dogs are barking. Okay, I'll let you out in a minute. Um, and you're going to use this mathematical formula. Now, I don't want you to panic because... I'm not asking you to do any type of math on the homework um, or on an exam, but it basically works like this. You take the width of the blood stain, divide it by the length of the blood stain, and then you take sine A of that, and it will give you the approximate angle of impact. Now, this is not, um, you know, a perfect method. There's always an error factor. Um, usually it's about five degrees, so, um, we would say that the angle of impact of this particular um, blood stain was between 20 and 30 degrees. So if I can have you look over here just for a second. So let's say we have a blood stain. So a couple of things this tells us is, first of all, it didn't hit uh, or it wasn't dropped from directly above because remember that would give us basically a circular pattern. So the fact that this is elliptical shape 
tells us that it was hitting at an angle. We can also tell the directionality because the, the tail points towards the direction of travel. So basically this blood hit here and then it was traveling in this direction. So the calculations that the analyst would do is they would take a little ruler measuring usually in millimeters and they would measure the width of the stain and then also the length of the stain, not including the tail, just the elliptical part. And then they would divide whatever the width is by the length, take sine A of that, and that is your angle of impact, okay? So first of all, does every single stain at a crime scene um, have to be measured? No. Um, a blood stain analyst would literally be at that crime scene for years if they tried to measure every single blood stain that's there because um, you know most stains are so bloody there can be thousands and thousands of stains but you want to try to locate one single event and then take a representative sample that may end up being you know 10% of the stains 5% 1% um, you just want to sample a few you can't possibly do all Okay, so once again, this is how you do it. You measure the width of just the elliptical part, the length, divide the length into the width, and then take sine A, that gives you the angle of impact. So the first thing that the analyst is gonna do is, you know, they need to get down on the floor, they need to get up close against the ceiling, wherever, you know, the blood stain pattern is, and do these calculations. And then they are gonna record those angles of impact and which particular stain it was, you know, in their notebook or in their notes because they're gonna need that later. So once that's been done, the next step is to calculate the area of convergence. And the area of convergence is defined as a point on a two-dimensional plane from which the, the drops originated. So this is on the surface where the blood is, whether it's on the floor, wall, ceiling, wherever, okay? It's in two dimensions. And the analyst is then going to either draw straight lines following the tails, or they can also use string and tape it onto the stain if they don't wanna mark things up with a pen. But they're gonna pick you know, stains out of that particular cluster and then the point where all of those lines converge is known as the area of convergence. It basically gives you the height at which that event happened, but it's still on the surface, so it's in two dimensions. And remember, different strikes are gonna equal different clusters of stains, and so you need to go through this process for each separate cluster of stains. Okay, here's an example of what an area of convergence looks like. So this is a perfect example of, you know, look at how many blood stains there are. Oh my God, I mean, the, you would have to be there for a year to be able to measure every single one. So they're picking out basically maybe 1% of the stains, calculating the angle of impact. So for example, that would be one particular stain right there. They would measure that, get an angle of impact, they do that for all of the stains where you see lines, and then they draw lines following the tails, and where they all meet, right here, oops, a daisy, whoop, there is the area of convergence of that single event, which is still on the wall. Okay, now we're gonna use that to get to the area of origin. Okay, so you always have to follow that order. You have to do angle of impact, then area of convergence, and then you get to the area of origin. So the area of origin, this is really gonna tell you the height or where this happened in three-dimensional space. So area of origin is defined as the area in a three-dimensional space from which the blood was projected. And it can show the position of the victim and or the suspect in the space in which the event occurred. It determines the distance from the blood source to the blood stain surface. And remember, as that distance increases, you're gonna have a much wider cluster. Um, you know, if it ends up being really close to the surface, the blood is gonna be much more condensed. 
Okay, so here's Dexter. He's using his method um, to come to the area of origin. Once again, notice tiny, you know, it's perfect. This tells you, okay, that knife hit right there. Um, that's not reality either. Makes for great TV. In reality, what bloodstain uh, pattern analysts have told me is if they can get to an area that is about maybe the size of, you know, a human head, you know, kind of like a basketball size with the area of origin, they're doing pretty well. So the method to do all of this is known as the string method. So the first thing, once you have calculated the area of convergence, you're then going to take some type of axis, which is usually a pole or a stand, um, you know, a, a lot of times crime scene personnel carry around a photographic tripod, and so that kind of serves as their pole or stand. You're gonna place that either at the approximate height of the area of convergence, if it's on a wall or a ceiling, if it's on the floor, you're going to place it directly above the area of convergence. And then the analyst is gonna get down on the floor, they're going to tape, take um, a piece of string and tape it to the blood stain that they calculated the angle of impact. And then they're gonna use a protractor, which you never thought you'd have to use again. They're gonna bring the string up to the angle of impact that they calculated, and then bring that up to the stand and tie it onto the stand. Okay, and wherever all of those strings meet, that's your area of origin, and that's where the bloodletting event occurred. Okay, so let me give you a very basic example. Um, also, if you look on Talon, I'm gonna post some YouTube videos just about basic blood spatter. One of them is gonna be about um, area of origin and convergence. Um, and so you can also look at that video and that'll give you um, an example um, of how these calculations are actually done. Okay, so let's uh, look at this particular scenario. So we have a single cluster of stains. It happens to be on the floor. So the first thing the analyst will do, they're gonna get down, they're gonna measure each one of these separate stains and calculate an angle of impact, which they're gonna have in their notebook. Okay. Then they're gonna either draw or take a piece of string and follow the tails, okay? And where all of the tails meet, that's gonna be their area of convergence. So the area of convergence in this example is right there, okay? Where all of those lines are meeting. The next step then is to take a stand, and in this case, they're using a photographic tripod. They're gonna place it directly over the area of convergence. And then they're gonna get down on the floor again and tape a piece of string to each of the stains and then bring the string up to the angle of impact that they calculated and then bring that string up, tie it onto the tripod. And then when you remove it, okay, there's your area of origin. Okay, so let's take a case example and I went over this in class, but let's say you have two you know, two people, um, we'll make them male. They're approx both approximately six feet tall, which we'll say would put them maybe about here in terms of height. Um, one of them strikes the other and the other person dies, okay? So you've got a living suspect, you've got a dead, um, you know, person. We don't want to put a label as victim, but you've got a deceased person. And the living person statement is, this guy was charging at me directly. Um, I had to hit him once in the head. Um, and, you know, because it was complete self-defense, I felt like he was going to kill me. Okay. So if his story is that he's charging directly at him and he hits him in the head, then we would expect that bloodletting event to be at about six feet. Okay, but when we go through the calculations, we find that the area of origin is right here. And let's say that that height is approximately three feet. 
So in that case, we know that the person is not giving us a correct story about what happened. If the story is, is he's charging at me straight ahead, I had to hit him in the head, we would expect that blow to be at about six feet tall, okay? The area of origin is telling us it's actually at about three feet tall. So was the person kneeling? Were they sitting? Um, if he was charging at him like a linebacker, then, you know, and there's a blow to the back of the head, then maybe, you know, his story makes sense. But this is the beauty of blood spatter because it can give you an approximation of events. So it's especially valuable for detectives to have when they take in um, to either interview or interrogate a suspect. Um, you know, and once again, it's not gonna tell you exactly what happened, but it can give you an approximation. Okay, so that's the end of PowerPoint number one. Um, I'm going to get this uploading right away. Um, and then later today, you, you'll see um, lectures for PowerPoint number two for bloodstain pattern analysis. Also look for an email from me. I will send out a remind text when I've sent out that email. Um, and I'll kind of give you an update of what the schedule is going to be for the week. Okay, so uh, cheers and talk to you later. Bye.